Kia. Uh, I might mention that I probably did. You know me, right? I know. Right? You're here. You're here. I'm going to say what I think. That's right. Okay, so we get this microphone working here. Keep sagging down on me. Is David Jones here? David? David. David, I, I don't see him, but he's always late. He, he's not on till long. I had the other day and he was late. Check one, two. Okay, good lord. I think we got it. Yeah, brand new one. This thing still isn't uh, isn't doing it for They can hear there's something in the I thought you were going to play some music first. Nah, no. Nah. It have to be another time. Come on down. Come on up. Check one, two. Okay, well, it's like we're going to get close to getting going here. And again, welcome to everybody. We've got people rushing the stage. I didn't recognize him with the beard and my terrible eyesight. So today we have uh, Gloria McCluskey. We have Katie, Katie Jean, saltwire writer in her Dartmouth outfit. We have David Jones, Dartmouth historian and archaeologist. And last but certainly not least, we have Hope Swinimer from Hope for Wildlife. And uh, I'm just going to let them uh, basically freewheel whatever they're going to say. There's no, uh, there's no agenda that's been presented to them. So uh, I just uh, hope you all enjoy it. And to start off, we're going to have Gloria McCluskey. And uh, Gloria, I'll turn it over to you. Hello out there. <laughs> just look around you. Look at the beauty here in Sullivan's Pond. And just think of how lucky we are to be able to live in this great city of Dartmouth and don't ever let it change. Make sure it stays city of Dartmouth. There's nothing wrong with Halifax, but we are not Halifax. They have their public gardens, we have our Sullivan's Pond. And we want our pond looked after the way they look after the gardens over there. So I want to begin by thanking Rick, Rick Guttrow, for doing this. I've known Rick for years as a great hockey player. And my son told me last night he was even a better lacrosse player. He's a musician. Someday he might come down with Sam Moon and do us a little bit of music. And, and most of all, he's a great Dartmouthian. He lives up the hill there. He comes down and watches our pond. And the, I came here in 1949 in Dartmouth, and houses were all around here. And it wasn't until Akerley was mayor that he started moving them and developing it. So uh, the last house was the Horn House on Hawthorne Street. So I just want my first message before I get into what happened when I was here. My first message is we are all stakeholders. Whether you live in an apartment or whether you live in a house, you pay taxes. And we are the stakeholders. And it's up to us to see that things get done as the taxpayers that we want to see get done. That's not happening. Things are happening. There's no consultation. But we have to speak up and speak out. So the first message I want to tell you is don't ever allow a tent to be on Solomon's Pond land. If one tent gets here, many others, and it will ruin the Sullivan's Pond. We know that these dear people need places to live, 
but this is not the place. Friday night, I, I don't know if you know where Grove Street is. I'll just tell you what happens when the tents move in. Grove Street was a nice wooded area and there were three, three little huts in there. Three guys who were quiet and who looked after the place. I used to go down and take them food until I found out they weren't uh, vaccinated and then I couldn't go back. But Friday night, I went down in there. There's a guy down there, he's a veteran. And so he loved chicken wings because I used to make him chicken wings. So I got him chicken wings at Brightwood, which are the best. And I took them down. And you wouldn't believe, you couldn't believe the mess of that area down there. It's unbelievable. And so that's what can happen. This place can be ruined. So we all have to be watchdogs and we all have to scream if anything happens and make sure it's removed. Because we don't want to lose this beautiful park. When I represented this area, both as mayor and councillor, I always made sure the grass was cut nice. We don't have the gardens we used to have. We had so many different flower gardens. We don't have them now. Those used to be all beautiful flower beds. What happened? I haven't been down here for a while because I'm 92. <laughs> And I don't get around much anymore. <laughs> so I don't see all these things. But it's up to us, every one of us, to look after this park. And to speak up, as I said, and speak out. Uh, I just want to talk about a few things that happened when I was here. First of all, the geese were here, of course. And we had a wonderful man named Alan Smith. And Alan used to bring, bring grain from Halifax. He built feeding places for them, and he built a lane to a shelter for them. But one day I caught him with his truck down there. Alan, you cannot take your truck down here. You have to put it on the street. So dear Alan passed away a few years ago, and I put a bench in his memory over there. I call him the Goose Whisper. So the bench, somebody threw it in the pond one night but uh, they got it out again. I want to talk about something else. On the other side of Sullivan's Pond on Hawthorne Street, there's a garden. That was a terrible looking place. It, there was nothing there. And two dear souls who lived at One Oak Street, Audrey and Lorne Moyer, they used to live on Pelzant, and they missed gardening. So they took it upon themselves to go over and put a garden there. They paid for it themselves. They built the rock walls. They put the flowers. They paid for flowers. They got people to give them flowers. And they did all that work. I put a plaque there so that we would make sure that we knew who did it. But in 2013, when they were no longer able to look after it, they asked HRM if they would take it over, and they didn't. So I put a, uh, in my newsletter, I asked people to volunteer, somebody to come out and to help look after it. And the Horti Dartmouth Horticultural did it then, but I don't know if anybody's doing it now. Has anybody been in that garden lately? Well, it's our responsibility to go in that garden. Anybody who's able, go in that garden. And if you see something that should be done, then clean it up. If there's garbage, please pick it up. If you have flowers you'd like to plant in there, do it. It's a shame to think that all the work they done there and that nobody that, that they did there and nobody is looking after it now. When they got so disgusted that they wanted the sign removed. So let's not let that happen. We can look after it. You know, if you go in and there's garbage, pick it up. If you have plants, take them in there and plant them. If anybody says anything to you, tell them to call me. <laughs> I'll deal with them. And, and then we have the dragonfly park. When they were looking for a place 
This is mothers who lost their children. When they're looking for a place where they could go and sit down and remember them. I found that place for them. And that's another place. HRM and some donors help pay for it. But if you go in there and it's not kept the way it should be, clean it up a bit. If the flowers aren't looked after, you could call your alderman, but he's not here today, our counselor. So, good luck. But anyway, uh, go in there and uh, clean it up, pick up garbage, and as I said, if they say anything to you, tell them to call me. But, uh, so, the other thing, when we had so many ducks here, and we did not want so many ducks because they pollute, they get up in Lake Binook and they pollute the lakes and then there's no swimming. So we had a sign, a fine if you fed the ducks. The other thing that was happening, they would bring food for the ducks and then the plastic bag would be thrown down. A plastic bag got in their fountain which cost $50,000 and was put there by Halifax Foundation. Tim Olive was the executive director for downtown Dartmouth and he was involved. But a plastic bag got in there. We had to send it down to the states for repairs. So if you see plastic bags, bags floating around, pick them up because if they get in there and they damage it, who knows if they'd ever fix it? It's Dartmouth. I just made a few notes here so I wouldn't forget. But this is such a great place. You know, we had the Christmas tree thing here and I'm so happy it's back here. Moved to the waterfront, but all the seniors loved it. It was something for them. And of course, we have Remembrance Day, which is a beautiful place for people to come and gather. And when I was mayor, we had the mayor's tea party every neighborhood. So I just want to close by saying, you know, I hope you take what I said to heart. I hope that you watch out for this park. And I must say, I'm not happy when I look around and things aren't as beautiful as they used to be. But we should speak to somebody. I'll speak to somebody in the gardening department. But it is so beautiful and it is such a relaxing place. And you can always watch the geese. And Hope is here today. We're so lucky we have the great Hope Swinomer here who takes care. When I was on council, we had the geese taken away. And one winter, they didn't tell me, but they decided to leave the geese. And one of them got frozen in the pond. She didn't, didn't die, but it was just frozen in there. So now Hope takes them. One old guy who had to stay, she kept him. I saw him when I was down there doing an interview with her one day, but he died. And one year we had a gosling, 2020, and that was great. So, you know, just recently, the Globe and Mail, imagine, a Toronto newspaper, said that Dartmouth was one of the coolest places to live. Yeah. We knew that. You know that we knew that, they didn't have to tell us. But it is, and, that, and being the coolest place includes this beautiful spot out here. So I just want to thank again Rick for arranging this. I want to thank everybody for coming. And remember your stakeholders and don't let them tell you anything different. And you have a right to ask for things to be done. So I'll, I'll shut up now. <laughs> and the uh, hope is here. David Jones, the great historian's here tell you all about Sullivan's Pond who, that was named after a foreman when, here, a Sullivan who was working on the and they will tell you all that anyway, thanks a lot great to see you I just want to remind you there's a little box on the stage and if you, if you can and you have any spirit change, it's for hope for wildlife. So we'll put it up there. It's not for me. I live
live on the big pension they didn't give me when I left council. All right, thank you. Yeah, hey, ladies and gentlemen, Gloria McCluskey, wow. So, uh, coming up next, we have uh, Katie Jean. And I'm just going to do a quick little camera thing here. i got to turn one off and turn it back on because it just does that after 20 minutes, turns itself off. But uh, then uh, I'm going to give a little announcement for Katie. Um, we're going to wait a, a little bit before we pass the box around. I'll have some of my lovely assistants walk around with the box so you, you don't have to get up from where you are. And uh, so just give me a couple of seconds here.